It's not just mine. His or her house. This is our house. Hello, everyone. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends. And before I start my show, I want to thank everybody that subscribes to my show and show me love all over the world. And I'm giving it right back to you right now. On the show, on my show, The Legends, I have somebody that he's been around for quite a while. And right now he is making an incredible buzz on the radio with his new track. But before we get into his new track, we're going to get into know who he is. And in the house of the legends today, I bring you Jay Hayden. Hey, Jay. Hey, hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, man, anytime, man, you know. So welcome to my show, The Legends. Um, we're going to talk about your beginning because you're, you're an incredible artist with versatility as far as your craft is concerned. And I think that, you know, on this show, everybody needs to know everything about you. And if you can't get everything, I guess <laughs> your performances will pay, you know, will actually some for itself okay so right. let's talk about the beginning for you um let's talk about um your actual where you're based from and how you mm -hmm. actually got into singing okay well um i'm based out of washington dc and mm -hmm. but i grew up um in pg county maryland uh it was like at the borderline so i had a little bit of best of both worlds i can walk across the street and i'm in washington come back across the street i'm in maryland you know right uh, so uh, with regard to music, um, I started off rapping, actually. Um, I wasn't always a singer. I, mm -hmm. I didn't learn how to sing until I say I was in my freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and even then, I was horrible. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a skill okay. set that I, I picked up. It was a talent that I had that I did not know I had. Mm -hmm. And then I picked it up and and progressed over the years, you know, right. um, by singing along with the radio and singing covers and um, and singing in a, a gospel choir, concert choir and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, what got me started, I was around six years old, I would say five, six years old. And my uncle, he was in uh, in D.C. We have uh, what's called, you know, we got go-go bands and go-go music, okay. yeah. and then, you know, um, when you're from this area, you just go to the go-go, right? Right. And he played for piano. And when he would rehearse in the basement, I would sit at the top of the steps and watch him play. And I knew from then, you know, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> because um, while everybody was outside playing, I was at the top of the steps. Like, this is, I just want to sit here and listen to this. Right. Um, he recognized that, started teaching me little songs from here and there, you know, you know, at that age, Murray had a little lamp, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I hear that <laughs> from there I progressed, um, started, you know, learning chords and, um, and then I actually started playing for a church and progressed there because when you, you know, being in front of a large audience mm -hmm. and you no, know, not messing up on the keys, you know, that right. kind of pressure. So I started at a young age, learning mm -hmm. what that felt, you know, learning what that felt like. Um, I also was in go-go bands. Okay. Um, when I was 13, I started playing for a go-go band when I was 13. Mm -hmm. Everyone else in a go-go band was like 20 and up, you know. <laughs> but wow. I was 13 on the keys. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, my mother had an issue with that a little bit. So, you know, sometimes I, I had- I would to have too. <laughs> <laughs> Playing at nightclubs at 13, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I would have to sneak out and go play. Yeah. So right. Yeah, had to sneak out and do it. But it was it was something, you know, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, but as far as singing goes, um, and or how I guess the career path, you know, um, I was in the middle school and I was, you know, I think was it middle school. I think it was middle school, just before middle school. Right. I was riding my bike, and I heard that a you know, a studio opened up around the corner for me. You know, so I rode my bike up there. Said, "How much it costs?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, and he was like, 
hundred dollars. He just threw a number out there because he knew I was, you know, young, a young and right. clientele was high end at that time. Mm -hmm. He said just a hundred dollars. So I went and started cutting grass, shoveling snow, doing whatever I had to do to get to get up my money. And then I mm -hmm. rode my bike. I rode back around the corner and was like, I got the hundred dollars. <laughs> Got in the studio, mm -hmm. uh, learned what music sequencing was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, back then, you know, the equipment, learning it um, with Logic's um, previous version before uh, Logic Pro. And then mm -hmm. I, uh, and then he heard something. He was like, "Oh, this this kid got talent, right?" Mm -hmm. And one of the things he did was offer me a job at the studio cleaning up. Oh, okay. I started sweeping the floors, cleaning the toilets, doing mm -hmm. whatever I needed to do to get a little money in my pocket and stay in the studio. So I used to just, you know, that was by any means necessary, right? So but you earned your key. You earned your key. <laughs> so, you know, um, from there I learned um, about recording techniques. I learned what mixing and mastering was. I learned how to do music engineering and I was able to be a part of um, sessions. You know, I used to watch people rehearse. So uh, meaning whenever, uh, someone is uh, recording uh, at the studio or or rehearsing in the rehearsal hall. I would monitor them, make sure everything was good, make sure the equipment was working right and things like that. Mm -hmm. Started running the studio and people right. who could come through there are people like Tank, um, people like um, uh, William Beckton when he had the number one gospel record out. They mm -hmm. would come through there. So I, and I used to be able to, you know, learn from these musicians who were like, you know top-notch musicians, you know? Right. And, uh, yeah, so it was the the hustle, you know, the grind. And right. I was, and again, I couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really sing back then. So, <laughs> so, you know, it was one of those things where I just kept going and kept going. And, and finally, it, one day, it was like, it just clicked. And I, and I knew how to use my voice like an instrument, like I would a piano or a guitar. Right. right. Yeah, so that's... You know, that's part of the, the story, you know, coming up with uh, music. Yeah. Well, it's good to know because uh, a lot of people don't know they have hidden talents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Um, I've, I've, I've developed quite a few of them in my lifetime, you know, and um, one of them is this, you know. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. I started off as a cameraman and then all of a sudden somebody said, hey, man, you need to get your own show. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> but after the first take, man, I've been... I've been doing this for almost going on four years now. And um, nice. I've done a lot of major celebrities and uh, in-house. And when the pandemic came, you know, the studio had shut down for a while. And um, so I'm doing virtual. But I'm back in the TV studios as well. You know, um, Jay, let's talk yeah. about your very first track that you actually professionally did. Would you tell the viewers the name of it and how did it come about? The very first track, professional track that I recorded. Wow. <laughs> I mean... That that I released or you that know, you released, yes. Oh, that I released. Okay, yes, sir. Nowhere. Um, okay. One of the very first professional recorded tracks that I've done. It was um, actually it was meant for um, I believe genuine at the time. Uh, so okay. What happens because I was a songwriter producer. So what happened was uh, genuine's management at the time came to me with a few tracks from all over from Atlanta, New York. This mm -hmm. one happened to be from a producer, a uh, uh, platinum uh, selling producer, uh, right. Glenn Mosley. And so I wrote the track for, you know, that purpose. And, you know, when you're shopping tracks around, sometimes they don't get picked up, right? Right, true. And so the track was so hot that me and the producer worked out a, a, an agreement and I ended up releasing that song. Well, before then, I ended mm -hmm. up going to a label situation. Um, and I, it was at the, the time and it was, you know, with labels is the time. And I had a deal actually on the table. It was mm -hmm. the last slot for R and B recording artists to get a deal. And, uh, a major celebrity <laughs> wanted their brother to get a deal at the same time. And right. it was a conflict with the, the budget. Cause when you, mm -hmm. you know, budgets at, like right now, it's at the end of the fiscal year, they don't right. get their money until October. So that they did, it just was the timing was off. Right. So I didn't end up getting that deal and I put it out independently on my mm -hmm. album. And um, it started getting plays in Washington, DC on mm -hmm. WHR FM, um, which is uh, rated the number one station out here. And mm -hmm. the 
Michael Basin got whiffed of it. And he had a, a um, you know, syndicated radio show at the time. Mm-hmm. And he played it. And next thing you know, it took off and hit Billboard Top 100. You know? okay. So currently speaking, um, briefly, let's talk about your new track. Because okay. your new track is like off the chain. Thank so you. let's briefly talk about it before my viewers get to hear it. Okay. Uh, special um, is a track that I wrote, produced, I mixed. Um, I also, um, you know, I did everything, you know, uh, I'm in-house and like, like I was inspired by people like Babyface and Brian McKnight, you know, to be a self-contained artist where you do everything in-house. So that's right. kind of like what I do, but I also work with every, you know, other individuals as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but special is answering the call because when I was listening to the radio and uh, I saw, I noticed that there wasn't music that can reach, you know, uh, the youth and Gen Z to the millennials, uh, X, you know, it wasn't a song with a broad scope that can, that's talking about, um, commitment, right. Um, being a provider, protecting, uh, developing, um, you know, creating generational wealth for your family, taking care of your family, being responsible, Mm -hmm. you know, everything was about what I got. Look at me. Um, money drugs you know just things that i was like hey, you know what? let me let me create something that's positive you know we right through the pandemic doing all you know everything was i needed people needed something to uplift right so that's what was behind the creation of special and um you know and it's pretty much dedicated to everyone that's out there that's grinding doing what they got to do to uh, take care of their families. Yeah. Well, you know, um, we're going to take a little break and we'll be, re- we'll be back with Jade Hayden and um, listen to this track special. Go out there, get it, support this brother, play it, play it, play it until you feel special. You know what I'm saying? And um, we'll be right back. <laughs> This is something special I ain't gonna lie to you, baby, let me tell you Let me take a piece of your heart, I'll be careful The mother niggas that be dancing with the devil I done did some things in my life that I regret to Know that I protect you from the things we gotta go through Even when you're wrong, baby, I'ma never quote you I know it get hard when I'm working and I ghost you It's not a nine to five, I'm a boss, so I got to I do it for my family, so one day you won't have to It won't mean a thing yeah, this is how special You ain't got to worry, I'm with it, I'm with it they Focus on my goals, not these, they don't get it Say no more, you ain't got to tell me Photogenic memories that we making Yeah, this is how special Special, special Yeah, this is how special Yeah, tell them that I'm outside Yeah, black Mustang, yeah, I'm outside yeah, I know you hear me parking at the curbside You know I'm back home with the back right, yeah Girl, I always got you You know I like, you know I like, you know I like, yeah And I will always love you Something special about us Something special, yeah Something special about us About it. We don't need to cause we live it I've been on a plane, not the country, never planned it Always blurry lines, fuck the rules, push the limit I know it get hard when I'm working and I ghost you It's not a nine to five, I'm a boss, so I got to I do it for my family, so one day you won't have to It won't mean a thing, girl, if yeah, I don't this is have to special. You ain't got to worry, I'm with it, I'm with it I focus on my goals, not these they don't get it. Say no more. You ain't gotta tell me. Photogenic memories that we making. Yeah, this is something special, special, special. 
Yeah, this is something special. Everything will be alright. Yeah. And different people make the world go round. And it's all because of you, my dreams are coming true. Who's that sound? That erases my rainy day. Right now, right now, I don't care who's watching. By my side, the world will be mine. You're the one for me. Yeah! Nobody, 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 nobody. And we're back. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends, and my guest today is R&B recording artist, Jay Hayden. Hey, Jay. Hey, hey. Hey, you know, um, while we're at it, talking about your new release, let's talk about your upcoming album, which is getting ready to drop, and speculate some of the songs of it and the worth of them. OK. All right, so pretty much, um, I have an upcoming album. I have, I have like, <laughs> I have like seven albums recorded right now, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And but this particular album that I'm going to drop, and the reason why I have seven albums recorded is because I was in doing heavy in television and film uh, for like the past five years. So right. I'm recording and recording, right? So, but this particular album, I like to refer to my music as love counseling, right? And okay. what I mean by that is when you hear it, uh, I I would like it to help you going through to help you get through whatever you're going through at the time. I don't care if you like, you know, bachelor, um, you, you're in a dating scene, uh, you're falling in love, you're in a long-term relationship, you're in a long distance relationship, you in, uh, you're breaking up, you, you got your heart broke, you did wrong, <laughs> you know, whether mm -hmm. you, you know, whether you cheated or not, you know, all those aspects I, I like to cover when I'm writing my music and I put it into a project so that it kind of touch everybody, you know what I mean? So something people can relate to, uh, the ups and downs of relationships, yeah, so. So um, basically you're giving your fans therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, my question to you is that, um, do you have to be in a special type of mood to actually project yourself as you're writing as an artist, or is this something that's naturally and bizzle inside you, you know. Um. Okay. Well, with it's a little both. It's a little of both, right? Okay. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> and some people <laughs> would test. They don't like watching movies with me. Sometimes I'm watching a movie, and I see something or hear something, and I'm gone. Because now I got okay. to studio, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got to write and record because I got inspired by something. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm having a conversation with someone about, you know, and that's what where it came from, where it stems from. People, when I was even starting early back in high school, people always used to ask me advice on mm -hmm. what to do with this girl, what to do with that, you know, with their relationship. And from both right. sides, females would call me, ask me, or my homies would call me, ask me, yo, what, what, would, you, what would you do in this situation? How do I fix right. it? So I've always been giving advice with relationships. So when I, I guess that kind of, you know, um, molded into, what I do today was love counseling with my music or how right. I got inspired by it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you know, that's, that's um, pretty much how I'm inspired by other people's real situations, my own real mm -hmm. situation and, or whether it's uh, motivated by movies, but when I got, when I got to do it, I got to do it. And a lot of times, even if I'm, it's two o'clock in the morning and I wake up, right. I hear a melody. I either reach over, grab my phone, and start recording the melody, mm -hmm. or I go to the lab and get it done right then and there. Don't matter. 
<laughs> I hear you. So Jay, let me ask you a question. What's what's your conscience on the competition out here as far as the industry right now? What is my what now? Your conscience on the on the um on the you know uh the competitions out here right now, you know. Uh well, I I will say this. This is how I look at it. You have new school R and B, mm -hmm. contemporary R and B, you know, soul, um, you know, so it's it's I would say that there are some people out here that are, you know, they can't sing really, and they get in the way with doing things. You put me on the stage with them, we're gonna go, right? <laughs> I like, I like, I've been looking at the verses, hey. you know, and I was like, oh man, I wish I was on there. So, but you. you know, but then mm -hmm. some people are recording artists, and some people are live performers, right? And not both, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that, you know, you can sing, you know, like how Tank, like uh, for instance, Tank O's uh, music. Uh, set the moon, light the candles, and bring the wine. Or you mm -hmm. could do something where it's real simple. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to really, you know, project your vocals that much and, and right. still a hit, right? So I would say I, I like both. I like right, both, right. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true R and B, you know, lover. You know okay. what I mean? So you know, even stemming back from listening to people like Donny Hathaway. Right, right. Um, Brian McKnight, Jonas, mm -hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but um, I also listening in to who's current now, you know. Right. Yeah. So. You know, um, let's talk about your TV and film because you've been involved in that. So, yeah. Let the viewers know about that. Give them a little bit of um something about that. Okay, so, um, I was actually performing out a lot with you know. During the time when my, my single was, uh, you know, doing well on radio and I was performing with folks like Marsha Ambrosia, Tank, um, you know, Ashford and Simpson, In Vogue, um, Raheem Devon. I was just on the road. And then so um, I noticed when I was doing, you know, I would do rehearsals. You got to go out, you perform, you're doing mm -hmm. the whole thing, signing the CDs. And then one day, one of my, because uh, I used to ghostwrite a lot too, one of right. the company out in New York hit me up and was like, hey, well, we just, we doing film now. I said, oh yeah, all right, well, you know, it wasn't something that I was really like focused on at the time because I was mm -hmm. really focused on that. And then, so they came and said, hey, they looking for, NBC is looking for a raunchy R&B type of song. I, and me being a creative person, I said, all right, I wrote a song where I, I cursed all the way through the, <laughs> I cursed all the way through the movie, I <laughs> but I made it a contemporary type of feel, you know, like, you know that uh like an avant type of style feel you know explicit um, but not explicit in a sense well yeah it was explicit i was saying okay. every curse word you could think of <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and they loved it <laughs> right <laughs> because you know it was comedy so they played on it and they was able to do beep 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 beep, beep oh they beep, 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 beep that they was able to <laughs> every other word and so um and i first got my check from that i was like wait a minute now, okay that i was having fun <laughs> It was only one hour, and then that led to me just shifting gears to right to focus on network television. So I just, mm -hmm. from, since then I've done perform. I did work with Orange and the New Black. I did work on Survivor's Remorse, uh, right? Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, um, Steve Harvey's TV special. I scored Magic Johnson's uh, TV special on mm -hmm. Aspar TV. Um, I've done a lot of ton of commercials, um, you know, and it's been going, you know, I, it's to the point where now, you know, I got to check my ASCAP, um, you know, Q sheet just to see where I'm getting placements now. <laughs> so, you know. Besides that, I think you better check your bank account too, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay, let me ask you a question. This is, I ask all my guests this because I think it's very informative to let other people know, hmm. you know, to encourage them or discourage them. Uh -huh. So, it's anything that you can tell upcoming artists to encourage them about the platforms of this thing called entertainment? Yes, yes, yes. I always say this, right? Because I've been, being a songwriter, sometimes when you're writing for a different artist, you have to study that artist. Then you have to, then you're writing for them. And then you do the same thing with another person. And, and then you can get lost as far as who you are, right? Mm -hmm. As an artist. Um, or try to mold yourself to what's trending mm -hmm. or yeah uh, but you know the whole thing i'm saying is is that when 
you are doing music or whether no matter what your craft is and your passion is, focus mm -hmm. on your passion. Don't focus on the trend. Don't right. focus on all that. Just be yourself. Um, and never take your eye off that because as soon as you start focusing, I've seen it a lot of times, people start focusing on the money. And now they they're not really enjoying what they're doing no more. They just like, well, how am I gonna get this next check? And it's right. it out in the frequency um, mm -hmm. and their music and what they're doing and what you put. You can tell when someone's passionate about it and when right, they, right, because uh, it's recorded to tape and people play it over and over again, over again. Right, if it's on tape. That's it. So I hear you. Your eye on the on the on your passion and creating your craft. Don't take your eyes off because when you do, you'll drop the ball, and that can be um, a fatal flaw. You know, in your career. I you hear know? You. Yeah. So. Be yourself. So, the money will come. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Let's tell the viewers about some of your current events, things that's coming up for you. You know, either if it's a tour, a concert, or you know, some type of debut. You know, um, inform them and make it brief if you can. All right. Well, if you go to uh, jhayden.me, um, all my I'll have everything updated there when I'm when I'm going on tour. I actually just dropped this single. And so what we're doing, going to do is we're going to actually drop another single along with the album coming soon. And mm -hmm. when that happens, uh, that's when my tour dates will start happening. And anybody can come, you know, uh, check me out. I'll also be doing live concerts online. Um, individuals can come and check it out. I'm doing, uh, you know, behind the scenes uh, videos where I'm doing live. I'm in the studio where I'm writing, where I'm recording. Um, playing the piano and just singing, you know, the whole nine. So it's going to be a lot of different, um, uh, you know, ways, a lot of different ways you can view uh, my, or hear my music. And, you know, so, yeah. Jay you know, if, if you, okay. if you're ever in New York, man, my studio is yours, man. All right, no let's problem. do it. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? You always got a home here, you know? Appreciate you. Um, Jay, it's been a pleasure. I mean, a pleasure to have you on my show, man. And, um, Thanks for the inspiration to other artists. You know, um, thanks for the informant of talking about yourself. And also, like I said, your production proves for itself. And, you know, I wish you Godspeed, man, and all mm -hmm. the things that you're doing, the things that you're actually about to encounter in your life. So this has been another t Low video production. My name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends. And this is Mr. Jay Harden, my guest. And so... With this, I thank you all for tuning in, and y'all stay tuned for another episode. Y'all have a nice evening. We got some fun people in the house tonight. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house.